5.3 practice problems. The graph opposite shows the results of a study of the reaction of x with a large excess of y to, re, uh, to yield z. The concentrations of x and y were measured over a period of time. According to the results, which of the following can be concluded about the rate law of the reaction uh, under the conditions studied? So um, as I look at um, the overall concentration of, of y, uh, it's really holding steady over the uh, length of time. So the concentration of y uh, is really not affecting the rate of that reaction. So anything where we are uh, dealing with y is going to be eliminated. So my only options here are uh, to deal with uh, the concentration of x. So I'm between 0 first and second order for the concentration of x uh, and the rate of that reaction. We can see that the rate of the reaction is um, slowing down as we get further and further along here. And that um, as we half, we are, we are decreasing that, that rate. Uh, so we are taking approximately twice the amount of time to get through um, half the amount of uh, x. And so that would be um, something that reflects a first order reaction. If 87.5% of a sample of pure um, iodine-131 decays after 24 days, what is the half-life of iodine-131? Uh, so um, half-life is going to be uh, how much we get after uh, or how long it will be uh, present after half. Um, or whatever. Anyway, uh, and so I am going to uh, decrease my, my presence uh, by um, over two half-life cycles. So remember that you are going to have half and then half and then half. So I would have 50% going to then 75% uh, then going to uh, 87.5%. So I have undergone three half-life cycles within 24 days. So three times what is 24? Three times eight is 24. And so that is how uh, long the half-life of iodine-131 is. If oxygen isotope um, oxygen-20 has a half-life of 15 seconds, what fraction of the sample would uh, of pure oxygen 20 remain after one minute. So there are four half-life cycles within one minute. So I am going to multiply half by, and I'm going to uh, do this a grand total of four times since there are four half-life cycles. And so that is going to be 1 16th is going to remain. Gaseous cyclobutane undergoes a first order reaction to form gaseous uh, butadiene at a particular temperature. The partial pressure of cyclobutane uh, in the reaction vessel drops one to one eighth of its original value after 124 seconds. What is the half life of this reaction at this temperature? So I am at uh, one eighth, and so that is uh, going to be three cycles of a half-life, and so it would be um, 124 divided by three. And that is uh, 41.3 seconds for each half-life cycle. The reaction between violet and hydroxide um, is a first order with respect to the violet. 
in the presence of excess hydroxide. A sample of the reaction mixture is placed in a spectrophotometer and the progress of the reaction is measured. The data um, are given in the table below. Approximately how long did it take for 75% of the initial uh, violet to react? So um, looking from uh, the initial um, absorbance here, uh, I am looking for this to be decreased by um, three quarters, basically. So um, uh, is how much I need to lose. So 0.62 minus 0.465 gives me that I need it to be at um, approximately 1.55. That is going to be closest to the 300 second mark. So that is going to be um, the how long it took for approximately 75% of the violet to react. A sample of uh, dinitrogen pentoxide was placed in an evacuated container and a decomposition uh, composition reaction occurred. The value of uh, the pressure of the dinitrogen monoxide and partial pressure of the dinitrogen monoxide was measured during the reaction and recorded in the table below. Uh, which of the following correctly describes the reaction? So um, the pressure is going to be directly related to um, how much I have and um, over, over time, the overall concentration. So I am going from, I am decreasing by approximately half and I am going um, at a uh, slowing down rate here. So that means that it's definitely not uh, zero order. Uh, this is going to uh, be closest to a first order reaction. Uh, the reaction uh, represented by the chemical equation shown above involves um, hydroperoxyl radical, uh, which occurs in the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, in the experiment, um, hydroperoxyl was monitored over time and the data was plotted, shown in the graph opposite. Uh, based off of the information, which of the following is the rate law expression for the reaction? So this is uh, one over the concentration of, um, of the hydroperoxyl. And uh, if we were a zero order, we would uh, not be seeing this. Um, instead, this straight line only occurs for uh, second order reactions. So that is going to be option choice C. Uh, the rate constant K for the decay of a radioactive isotope, um, iodine-131, is uh, 3.6 times 10 to the negative third hours. The slope of which of the following graphs is the correct for the decay that could be used to confirm the value of, uh, sorry, the correct for the decay that could be used to confirm the value of K. So this is going to be uh, how we calculate for, um, for our slope, and our slope is uh, going to be um, that uh, we have one uh, our, our concentration of iodine and um, this radioactive decay is going to follow the natural uh, log of that concentration of um, iodine. And so um, needs to be natural log, not just the concentration, um, and just the inverse uh, is not going to work here. We do need to involve the natural log. So option choice C is the only one that involves the natural log, and that is how we're going to be able to find the slope or K of that uh, reaction.
Hydrogen peroxide decomposes to produce water and oxygen according to the equation above. An experimentally determined graph for the first order decomposition of hydrogen peroxide is provided opposite. Which of the following best identifies the rate constant K for the reaction based off of the information of the plot of the natural log of hydrogen peroxide versus time? So um, the uh, natural log of hydrogen peroxide is going to uh, be the definition for um, the uh, K, where we have uh, that negative slope of graph is equal to the um, rate log constant for that reaction, or K. So option choice C is that definition, so that is what we would choose. X goes to products. Um, pure substance X decomposes according to the equation above. Uh, which of the following graphs indicates the rate of composition in a second order um, X? So the rate of decomposition um, for second order is going to be uh, the uh, slope and we need uh, one over the concentration for um, our slope for second order so that is going to be um, option choice D there um, where we are increasing our time and we are um, uh, increasing the one over the concentration just because as this gets smaller we get closer and closer to one so we should see an increase in our uh, in over our line over time uh, as we decrease the overall concentration of X uh, the iser uh, isomerization of cyclopropane to propylene is a first order process with a half-life of 19 minutes at 500 degrees Celsius. The time it takes for the partial pressure of the cyclopropane to decrease from one atmosphere to 1 point, sorry, 0.125 atmospheres at 500, and, uh, 500 degrees Celsius is closest to. So we need to figure out uh, how many half-life cycles have gone on to get to uh, 0.125. So um, half uh, multiplied by half, that is a quarter, that's 0.25, and then I need uh, one more to get to uh, 0.125. So that would be three half-life cycles, and we have our half-life at 19 minutes. And so 19 times three gives me 57 minutes, and that is how long it would have taken to uh, get uh, that much of a decrease in the concentration of the uh, cyclopropane. The half-life of chromium-55 is about two hours. The delivery of a sample of this isotope from the reactor to a certain laboratory takes 12 hours. About what mass of such material should be shipped in order, to, uh, in order that one milligram of chromium-55 is delivered to the laboratory? So um, I uh, am going to undergo six half-life cycles um, and uh, in the process of being uh, delivered over the course of 12 hours, since I each half-life is two hours, so I'm going undergoing six half-life cycles. So that's half times half times half times half times half times half. Okay, so that is um, quite small. Three, four, five, six. Okay, so this is the amount that is going to remain, and I want uh, one milligram uh, to remain uh, viable. So I am going to uh, divide one milligram by the uh, half-life percent fraction that I have, and that is going to be 64 milligrams that would need to be put into the container uh, to still leave me with one milligram um, at time of delivery.
consider the reaction represented by the equation 2x plus 2z goes to x2z2. During the reaction, uh, in which a large excess of the reactant X was present, the concentration of the reactant Z was monitored over time. The plot of the natural log um, of the concentration of Z versus time is shown in the figure opposite. The order of the reaction in respect to the uh, reactant Z is, so when I am dealing with first order reactions and I am uh, dealing with the natural log of that uh, reaction. If I am having a downward slope here, that this is going to be a first order uh, reaction with respect to Z.